So there's a pretty big gap when it comes to the expectation versus reality of being a full-time YouTuber. Most people think that it looks like this. But the truth is that it actually looks something more like this. Let's do that just one more time. Okay, let's do that one more time. Just one more time. Uh... I should be making a video right now. I should be making a video right now. I should be making a video right now. Uh... And all jokes aside, it really means spending hours and hours staring at a computer screen, writing, planning, and editing. This is the real life of a YouTuber. That was actually perfect. Let's do it one more time. I think the reason that most people get this wrong is because they think that the feeling that they get when they watch a YouTube video is the same feeling as making a YouTube video, and those are two completely different things. And that's not a bad thing. Over the past three or four years, I've made a full-time living as a YouTuber. It's a strange way to make a living for sure. There are many highs and there were certainly many lows over the past few years. And I wanted to talk about my own personal experience behind the scenes being a YouTuber because this is something that I don't really talk about that much on this channel. By the way, if you're looking to start your own channel or if you're feeling stuck with your current one, my new course, Master YouTube, might help. The reaction since we launched it has been incredible. This year's enrollment is closing 72 hours after I upload this video. So if you want to join in 2021, sign up before Wednesday, May 19th. So I want to talk about my own personal experience as a YouTuber. I'm certainly not speaking on behalf of everyone. I'm not what you would call a YouTube celebrity that gets hounded on the street. I don't travel around the world living in a sprinter van, and I don't make prank YouTube videos that go viral for all the wrong reasons. Although there was that one video. As many of you know, on this channel, I talk about self-development, productivity, minimalism, and other nerdy things like that. And so my experience definitely isn't the same as many others. So I'm gonna be honest, I never in a million years thought that I'd be able to make a full-time living on YouTube. I didn't start a channel because I thought it would be wildly successful. I started it because it was just something that I couldn't not do. You know, like all-inclusive vacations or half-price apps at Applebee's, except YouTube doesn't give you diarrhea all the time. Sometimes, sometimes it does. My experience on YouTube in the very beginning was just like anybody else who's getting started out with zero subscribers. Nobody watched my videos and I had a really difficult time building traction. I think the hardest hurdle for me to overcome in the beginning was investing time and energy into videos when nobody was watching them. And eventually you're gonna have to do that if you wanna build a following. You need to actually put effort and energy into your videos to help them to stand out. But I resisted that for so long and instead uh, made videos that were easy to make or quick to make. And I was really hesitant to put the 20, 30 hours a week into my videos that I currently do. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome. I think, am I recording? I am recording. We're doing it. But once I overcame that and just started making videos, putting everything I had into each video that I made, then I started to see a little bit of a difference. Little by little, I was able to build an audience for myself. Now I am drastically oversimplifying things because I'm not gonna go into every detail of how I grew my audience and my channel over the course of a couple years, but just know that it was very difficult, there was a lot of doubt, and there were many times when I thought about throwing in the towel and giving up, but I pushed forward, I kept making videos, and eventually I started to see some indicators that I was gonna be able to turn this into a full-time living. One of the biggest factors that allowed me to really have confidence in this decision to go full-time with it was becoming a creator on the rise. I think I got something like 50,000 subscribers in a month when YouTube featured me on their trending page. Holy sh That was just a wild moment to be able to sit back and be like, oh my God, I think I'm actually gonna be able to do this for a living. My wife and I have been just talking about whether or not this was gonna work out for a long time. And this was really a moment where we both looked at each other and were like, this might actually work. That's when things got equally exciting 
and stressful. It was exciting because people were watching my videos for the first time. It was stressful because people were watching my videos for the first time. And overcoming the doubt that I had about the videos that I was making, continuing to show up and, and make videos when I knew that there was gonna be an audience there waiting for them, uh, was really nerve wracking. I suddenly felt the stakes. And this is why I often think and I often say to YouTubers, if you have zero subscribers, you should create videos like you have a million because then you're actually gonna put the effort needed to make great videos. And if you have a million subscribers, you should create like you have zero because then that's gonna really allow you to let go of that fear and the self doubt and just create videos for the, the fun of it because people are gonna show up, but you need to actually show up in a way that you're actually enjoying the projects you're making and you're taking chances on the kinds of videos that you make. From the moment I started until I began to build momentum and even until this day, most of my days look very similar. <laughs> I've had people ask me uh, if they could be a fly on the wall and just shadow me for the day. And trust me, that would be the most boring experience ever because all you would do is just watch me behind a laptop for eight hours a day for most days. It may not seem like it, but this is when I'm happiest. Happiness often gets confused with joy or euphoria. But for me, happiness doesn't come from the peaks. It comes from finding fulfillment and purpose in the day to day. So this might not seem sexy. It might not be the poster image of happiness, but true fulfillment doesn't look like you think it does. So to be a YouTuber means that you need to face your fears. And that sounds a little bit corny, but it's absolutely true. In the beginning, you have the fear of failure. Uh, the fear of looking like a complete idiot. And so you just have that fear that you've wasted your time, that people are making fun of you, people are talking about you behind your back, but you have to continue to show up and push that fear to the side in order to pursue this unconventional career. And then ironically, and this might be hard for a lot of people to relate to, uh, but anybody who's seen any kind of success, there's always this fear that things will come crumbling down, that you'll lose what you have. And I have talked to so many YouTubers and I don't think there has been one who doesn't have this fear that their channel will come crumbling down, that people will stop watching their videos and the good ride is gonna end. And so these are the, the different fears that you have to overcome and embrace and push through if you wanna be a creator online. And of course there's anxiety and stress and pressure. Check one, two, this is a test. I'm super fucking tired. Making videos on YouTube is a really peculiar career because there's really, I don't think many other careers in which your worth and your value can be summed up in a number on a screen that's so beautifully presented on the YouTube dashboard. And um, that can really get to you and that can really take uh, a beating on your mental health and it can certainly create a lot of anxiety and anxiety in your life. And the one thing that I've really learned is that you have the ability to take a step back, to slow down. We put these arbitrary rules on ourselves like, oh, I need to make a video every week. Oh, I need to show up and do X, Y, Z. I gotta create this amount of content on Instagram and TikTok and email newsletters and I gotta have my website, my blog all this stuff, we think we have to do everything, but we really don't. Especially if you've already started to build some momentum and you've established an audience, you don't have to burn yourself out. In fact, that's actually the least productive thing that you can do as a creator. And so you need to make sure that you're pacing yourself, you're slowing down, and you are taking control over your life because you are your own boss. Um, and so that's something that, that took me a while, especially as an ambitious person, to understand I need to slow down, I need to step back. And even it took all the way until this year to really start to pump the brakes and to release less videos. And I can tell you firsthand, I'm so much happier when I make room in my life to not only create great videos that I'm proud of, but also to create a life that I'm proud of. I think I also have to mention the fact that as a full-time YouTuber, you're making videos for a living. <laughs> and I think that anybody, no matter how many subscribers you have, or even if you're a freelance filmmaker or photographer, any kind of creative, if you can make a full-time living, 
doing that, the thing that you find so much fulfillment from, the thing that you're passionate about, that's a win. I think truly that should be the end goal for everybody. I know that's the end goal for me. Maybe I'm not setting my sights very high, but for as long as I've been able to make a living making videos, I've been happy. And I think sometimes we lose sight of the fact of how special that truly is. And so if you're looking to, to become a YouTuber yourself, that should be the goal, to make a full-time living making videos. And so apart from being able to make a living making videos, I think the coolest thing about this job is being able to connect with others. So in 2018, I started to, to build that momentum. Uh, that was also the same year that I got recognized in person for the first time. <laughs> this is something I've never talked about, but I remember, uh, so I was at the gym and I, there was this guy, he was bench pressing and then, uh, you know, I was walking past him. He said, oh, hey man. And I thought he needed a spot for his bench press. He didn't. He said, oh, hey man, I really love your videos. And I was just like so taken back. And I was like, this is crazy. This has never happened to me before. And we had like a little chat back and forth. And I was so freaking awkward that at the end of the conversation, I meant to say, uh, thanks so much, man. All right, take it easy. But instead I said, all right, thanks so much, man. And I reached my hand out to him and said, hey, how's it going? <laughs> and he was so confused. He was like, what do you mean? We already met, we did the hello thing. And now you're, you're doing that at the end. I'm sorry, did this conversation just start? And so I felt like an idiot. Uh, I still get very awkward uh, when people come up to me. Honestly, like everybody is so cool. Like everybody I meet is like way cooler than me. I'm like, why are you watching my videos? Like I'm a loser. This is like, you're actually like a cool person. Um, but everybody's super kind and nice and supportive. And so it's always great to meet, um, you know, people in person that have watched my videos and gotten a thing or two out of them. Um, on top of that, for me, what's been really cool is being able to connect with other creators that have inspired me. And so I've gotten to collaborate, have calls, even emails with some creators that have inspired me so much over the years. Anytime you're in a, a creative field, I think you need to, to find those sources of inspiration, uh, people that you can continue to look up to. And now it's really cool because I can call many of those people my friends. Am I gonna be a YouTuber forever? I think about that a lot. And obviously the answer is no. Like I'm not, I don't think I'm gonna be like 65 years old <laughs> fucking making YouTube videos. But like there is something that I, I mean, I love making films. And I, I think for as long as I'm working, I'm going to be making videos. And so while in five or 10 years, I might not be making videos on this YouTube channel, I will be making films because that is truly what gives me the most fulfillment in life. And if you're somebody who wants to start a YouTube channel and, and, and you know pave their own way on this crazy platform, you have to love making videos. If you don't love making videos, don't do it. <laughs> like this is, that's it. That's the one thing that this is all about. It's about making videos, about creating. And so if you're doing it just for attention or for views or for money, then that's not going to cut it. You're not gonna be able to push through all those hard times if you don't actually enjoy the craft of making videos. And so, oh yeah. I've got a course. Introducing Master YouTube, your roadmap for creating a successful channel with integrity. In this course, you won't find any clickbait tactics or gimmicks that don't actually teach you how to make great videos. By taking this course, I'll show you a process for how to make great videos from scratch, all the way from brainstorming to publish. You'll learn how to come up with original ideas. I'll show you exactly how to turn those ideas into a compelling script. Even if you're starting out with a smartphone, you'll learn the foundational elements of how to film yourself on camera and how to do it on a budget. This literally cost about $25. I'll introduce you to a process for how to edit your videos twice as fast, no matter what application you choose to edit from. The idea here is that we wanna take that main storyline that we worked on in our script, and we wanna bring that into our project timeline. Making amazing videos is just one part of the puzzle. How do you make a compelling thumbnail? How do you workshop titles? How do you break through the noise? And how do you do all of that without clickbait? You'll learn how to develop the right mindset to succeed, and I'll share a model for growing your first 1,000 true fans and beyond. So what do you say? Are you ready to master YouTube?
If you want to learn more about it, go to slowgrowth.com slash master YouTube. Thank you so much for your support over the years. It has truly meant the world to me. Being able to do this for a living uh, just doesn't get any better. Thanks so much.